and uh, you're, you're welcome to join in with us. Uh, Councilman Brad Stipes, if he will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will uh, call this this meeting to order. The first thing on our agenda is a consent agenda, which is the council minute, meet, meeting minutes of June 21, 2016 and June 28, 2016. Move we approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hopper? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stites? Aye. That would be six. Thank you very much. Uh, under recognitions, the only recognition we have tonight is I would like to introduce our new Human Resource Director, David Bromstadt. From came to us from Martinsville, Virginia. He's got a got a pretty extensive background in HR, and we're glad to have him here. Thank you for having us. Is that it? Is that all you got? <laughs> I hope to serve my new town manager and the town very well. I I do have some experience, but I have a lot to learn, too, so I just look forward to the opportunities here. Thank, Thank you. you. Did you bring a pizza or anything? <laughs> <laughs> They're in the office. Okay. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the citizens' hearing, which is comprised of citizens' comments. We don't have anyone that has asked to speak tonight. If there's anyone here that would like to, uh, to address council, please feel free to do so. You may... Do it from your from your chair. If you will give us your name and address, and, and address all of your comments and questions through the chair. Anyone here to address council? Right along. Uh, next on the agenda is staff reports. We have Adam Carpinetti, assistant to the town manager, to present on the IT department. Working when I came in. Working when I came in. Good evening, Mayor, members of Town Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, about a year ago, I gave you uh, more of an update around what is um, IT for the Town of Christiansburg. Tonight will be uh, maybe a little bit shorter uh, to kind of just give you an update of what's kind of been going on over the last year and maybe what to look forward to over the next year. Still, in, in IT, uh, we have uh, staff primarily made up of, I'll say, uh, three and a half people. Charles Burst is our IT technician. He primarily handles all the desktop-related stuff, uh, kind of like the first level of support. Somebody calls and says, hey, I have trouble you know, printing, that sort of thing. He's that first line of support. Uh, next is Eric Ball. He's our network systems administrator. Handles just about anything server and network-related. Truly a, kind of a jack-of-all-trades and is that next level of support. It's something that, you know, we can't quite figure out, kind of go for him to that um, extra expertise. Pete Hayslip, he's our radio technician. For the most part, he does a lot. He handles all the uh, police, fire, rescue, public works radios, uh, manages multiple uh, uh, radio sites. I think we have about seven of those in total. Um, handles uh, installing uh, cages in police cars. Basically, when we can receive a new police car, uh, he strips it, takes out even like the back seat, and puts the nice hard plastic seats in. Um, like I said, installs the cages, lights, radios, sometimes two, three, four radios that goes inside of these camera systems. Mm -hmm. And that also includes even fire trucks and ambulances and anything public works related that may even get a radio installed. So he, he does a lot. Uh, we're very fortunate. We, we're actually one of the few agencies in the area that has dedicated staff for that. And um, I'd like to think that uh, any department is really appreciative of that. And then myself, and I kind of counted myself as, as, uh, as a half. Um, while I do uh, mostly IT, I also have some other responsibilities as well outside of IT. 
So, renewing this slide, um, we'll call it IT by the numbers. Um, locations, what you may see in uh, kind of a darker blue is the numbers from last year. Last year I presented we had around nine different sites. This year, uh, we, or over the last year, we've increased that to 14. One of the reasons is we started putting more technology in our radio sites, uh, where police fire rescue radios are, whether that's for monitoring battery levels to make sure that battery backups, that sort of thing, uh, have um, you know appropriate life expectancy should there be an outage. Uh, cameras in some locations, motion sensors, just to see if there's anybody tinkering with our stuff or, or that sort of thing. So we've increased the number of sites that we had. Uh, Town Hall is still uh, our primary data center. We do have a secondary data center. And we'll be looking to maybe expand on that later as well. Our users, for the most part, have stayed about the same. And a lot of that times that comes in from whether it's new employees or that sort of thing. So there hasn't been a lot of adding. And sometimes it's one in, one out. So that, that number has re remained relatively um, unchanged. Desktops and laptops, uh, once again, maybe changes by a percentage point or two year over year. Um, usually, unless there's a major department that's expanding or uh, a new department that comes in or something like that, there's usually not a lot of, uh, you know, adding of extra computers due to, you know, new employees getting them, that sort of thing. So for the most part, uh, short of, hey, we just hired an intern, hey, we have this extra, you know, uh, responsibility that now needs a dedicated machine, that's when we'll end up adding one. So that, for the most part, doesn't change. Uh, servers is kind of the same thing, uh, just, um, you know, went up, uh, maybe just a, a few for, uh, I can remember a couple of these, uh, the new 911 center. Uh, for our GIS guy, he was doing some testing, it makes it easy for us to uh, fire up a new server for him so he can do some testing to help transfer data over to it. Applications start to get to the point where you almost stop counting. Uh, we continue to do quite a bit, and um, like I said, it's, it's difficult to count every single thing that we do in there um, because it, it's just so vast. Multiple di mobile devices, this is where we are continuing to grow. A couple of the big projects that came out of last year uh, that is really increasing that number. Last year, I reported on about 150. This year, we're, we've grown to about 215. Uh, see, some of you have them in front of you. Uh, that gets added into the number. Our public works is rolling out a fleet of about 30. Uh, in addition to that, that's also you know, Verizon Air Cars that goes to support some of their um, mobile technologies and that sort of thing. So that number you know, is, is continuing to grow and, and is placing uh, you know, certainly a little more of a burden on us, but also giving them great functionality out in the field. Network devices. Um, once again, that's kind of a catch-all. It just continues to grow. Every time, you know, you'll see things on there like HVAC. Um, we continue to expand our buildings to be able to put our, uh, our HVAC, you know, air conditioning, heating, cooling, that sort of thing, on the network. So a person from Public Works can log in remotely, change temperatures if need be. Um, the idea is, you know, here at 7 o'clock, start to cool the temperature while people, you know, start to filter in or, or funnel in. Service requests. I changed the slide up a little bit. Last year was more of a pie chart that just showed the percentage of tickets or the percentage of work requests that came over by department. Police department is certainly the busy one, uh, or the most busy. The extra bar that I added that is in green is time. That's one of the things we are trying to start doing is a better time of tracking not just service requests, but the amount of time that we're spending in a department. As you might see up here, I think the one all the way over on the left um, is administration and aquatics, just pointing those out. Sure, we had a, a few trouble tickets in there, uh, but for the most part, they probably didn't take a lot of time. They may have been trouble tickets that were closed out in 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes. Then we may go over to uh, actually where you see the finance department right here. Not quite as many tickets as aquatics even, um, but they certainly had some service requests or tickets requests, what have, what have you. That took a lot of time. There were several projects, and I'll, I'll show you on the next slide, that you know, a service request may come in and say, hey, can we get such and such updated? We may have spent 30 hours working on that particular project, service request, that sort of thing. Police department, as you can kind of see, is um, I think it shows around 35, 34% of the amount of service requests that comes over. That has increased since last year. And I'm hoping next year and subsequent years I can continue to track approximately how much time each sort of request or project is taking. 
Once again, the PD is, is certainly demanding, which makes sense, probably a department with the most employees, but they also have a great deal of technology to, to serve. Uh, what kind of request would they need? The police department? Uh -huh. One of the big ones this year uh, was migrating over to the new 911 center. Okay. Uh, as part of that, we changed over to a new record management system. Basically, if, uh, uh, if they, a new call comes in to say, hey, there was a robbery at you know, XYZ location, that starts them to generate the record um, to you know, start processing that case, that right. sort of thing. And so they switched over to a new system to migrate into the, uh, the new 911 authority this year. That was huge. Um, we'll just say that requires... Is that the reason it's so high, that particular one? Well, that's, that's one of them. Um, but as you can see, the amount, the number of requests that they had is probably three times as much as anybody else. So in, in blue is the number of service requests. That's how many times somebody says, my email's not working, my phone's not working, my, you know, our, you know, this application is throwing some sort of an error. Like I said, some of those are maybe five minute, you know, fixes, or they're fixed before we even get over there because, you know, we'll say gremlins in, in the IT world. Sometimes it just started working again. But then, like I said, there are certainly other times where a request comes over and we end up putting 40 or 50 hours into a project sometimes. So, uh, like I said, that's, that's kind of why they're somewhat off the charts in, in both categories. We spend a tremendous number of time just purely because of the amount of technology and the number of people that we support over there. Some of the projects that we, that we did last year. Uh, up top is a couple that were kind of out of IT. A lot of the projects that, that IT handles specifically uh, or out of, directly out of the department are those that affect all users or a huge number of users or uh, spanning departments. One of those was the implementation of a, an MDM. That is what some of you might know is what we call MAS. That's the Mobile Device Manager. As you saw on a couple slides earlier, we support in excess of 200 devices now. Those are getting into that. Uh, those are getting into that software so we can better manage them, track them. If you guys want a new application on your on your iPad, we could you know get into the back end. We could go in there and we could push a new application out to your uh, uh, out to your iPads. Same thing goes for the rest of the fleet, whether it's uh, or the rest of the employees, whether it's on a phone, whether it's on uh, an iPad or, or some other tablet. We can push those out and make sure it's done securely. One of the biggest reasons we brought that in was because of the acronym and buzzword, I guess BYOD, bring your own device. We've had a lot of employees that have wanted to use their own personal mobile device for a town business. Well, that gave us a good way to be able to segment the personal side of that device to the town side of that device to make sure there's no data sharing across, or if, you know, worst case, worst case scenario, if an employee goes rogue or whatever, we make sure that data stays with the town and it's secure. So we have completed any town-owned device. Uh, if any device is actually owned by the town, that's in there. We have started to enroll any employee that is bringing their own device. Um, in addition, but we also still have some that we haven't quite enrolled into it yet, and we probably maybe have about 25 to 30 of those to go. Network security penetration test. We took a, like a first jump into this, what we'll call um, a light penetration test. And it was working with a consultant to come in and, for lack of a better term, do some light hacking, trying to figure out where's some of the basic weaknesses that we have. Um, fortunately, we had a pretty good um, result from that. Um, it's like the person, uh, the company did give us some follow-up items that we may want to take a look at. And once again, the next slide will actually kind of um, hit on it again uh, to kind of take that to the next level. Fiber master plan. Um, this was about trying to figure out how the, the town can maybe build its own fiber network to meet some municipal needs. I think uh, I've had some discussions with the Planning District Commission. Sounds like there's other municipalities in the region that are interested in doing something similar, both from a citizen need side, but also from a municipal need side. And so we kind of put that on hold a little bit because the PDC sounds, or the New River Regional Commission, I guess now, uh, they're looking at kind of taking the lead on that and trying to do some studies and potentially finding some grant money that can uh, help in that scenario. So we'll kind of uh, keep the money in our pockets for right now to kind of see maybe what they might be able to come up with or we might be able to use to support their efforts. 
development of a disaster recovery business continuity plan. Once again, trying to figure out how we can uh, continue service in the event something should happen. That could be as simple as uh, uh, a part failing, a major part failing, up to a tornado or you know a hurricane that knocks out uh, some of our major functionality. We started into it, started some initial discussions with the uh, with the departments, trying to figure out which applications are most important and trying to start to tier them to say, hey, our financial application, so we can take water payments, so we can take garbage payments, so we can pay our employees. That's probably one of those that ranks up pretty high. Maybe a little bit lower than a, uh, not to belittle any engineers or anything like that, but maybe not as important as a licensing server for AutoCAD to make sure an employee could be using AutoCAD. Uh, I, could be, I could be wrong, but I'm relying on the departments to give me that information as opposed to me assuming that. As we started to go through, we started to find out that this is really, really involved. And we don't have the expertise internally, uh, and, and in some cases, the time. And sometimes getting that uh, outside help can help further um, justify some of the outcomes from it. So we are looking to hire a consultant. Uh, money was allocated for that, so I, I do look forward to uh, um, going through that plan, because I, I think it's certainly something that's needed uh, for a wide variety of the services that we offer. Desktop management, uh, this kind of this is a software uh, to kind of help us better manage our time, better manage work requests, um, better manage our assets. You know, how do we know when we purchased how old some of our uh, infrastructure is to kind of help us make better decisions moving forward. Um, we found a product that we really liked. Uh, we found a couple products that we really liked, I guess, and we're doing some final evaluation and, and asked uh, that uh, funding be rolled over into this fiscal year from last. Uh, to hopefully give us some more time to do some better testing and, and better ideas. Some of the other projects, these kind of came out of the departments themselves, and I'll just touch on them really, really briefly. Uh, the record management system, RMS for the fire departments. They also changed over to help better support what is coming out of the 911 authority changeover. PD, uh, once again, their RMS and the migration to uh, NRV 911, the, the 911 authority. A couple of things that also came out of that was what happens after 5 o'clock when we no longer have dispatchers uh, there to take non-emergent calls. So up until last week, if you were to call 382-3131 after 5, you would still get a live person in our police department. Um, or I guess as of June 27th, I guess it was. Um, you would still get a live dispatcher, Christiansburg dispatcher. Well, if you walk up there after 5, once again, two weeks prior, you would get a live dispatcher because all of our dispatchers just left the office and are over at the 911 authority now, there's nobody there to take your call. So what we did was install a, a call box on the outside that has communications both inside our police department and across the street. It also gives uh, folks across the street the ability to unlock our doors, to let somebody inside into the vestibule area, to a secure area, if they do need to talk to a police officer. That was another huge piece of this that was, oh my goodness, what do we do if we don't have you know, 24-hour staff at the police department to, like I said, either answer calls after five or uh, come up to the door. So, so if you had someone come up at two in the morning and need to really, it's important to talk to a police officer. They don't have a cell phone. They can actually get access to the building and speak with a police officer, even though there's no dispatcher there. Exactly. Yep. There's a call box on the outside. They can hit the call box. It forwards a call over to the 911 authority. They answer the call. They take the request or say, hey, I need to talk to an officer. They could dispatch an officer back to the, um, uh, back to the building, or there might be one just in the, in the building already. Right, right. Okay. And so, Sorry to interrupt. That's no, so that's fine. Great question. I'm, I'm happy to explain. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go just to piggyback on that. And sure. non-911 uh, non call-in goes where again? Uh, Non-emergent, so after hours, goes over to the 911 authority as well. Okay. So water line breaks, that sort of thing. Okay. So I'm uh, sure there's some other things as we continue to go through this, we will find that we need to, you know, adjust or, or shift. Uh, what if they call the, the regular police phone number, not the 911? The, yeah, the 3130, yeah, the 3231, the non-emergent line, also after okay. five, transfers, when I say across the street, I mean the 911 gotcha. authority. So they handle those calls as well. We've been 10, 12 days now. How are things going with the new system? As, as far as I know, I think, it's, I think it's been okay. The only complaint that I think I've heard is sometimes from the call box, there's some static. Uh, that's 
you know, and unfortunately sometimes in nature with those external weather proof enclosures or weather proof call boxes, and they sound staticky. Um, it sits under a, um, in a vestibule area um, that's not enclosed on all sides, so I think the wind kind of gets in there. So that's something that we are looking to maybe do something with, or whether it's wind guard or actually changing out to a, a regular like telephone handset that you would pick up. So that's the only thing I've heard so far. ACA reporting, as you know, uh, with um, the Affordable Care Act, there was some additional reporting. I know our uh, sysadmin had worked with our, um, uh, I guess, our, our health insurance person uh, a great deal trying to get some new software set up, trying to help on reporting, trying to figure all this stuff out. And, uh, you know, that was a new reporting that came down that we had to submit. So that took considerable time. It's why I included it. Utility billing changeover. I included this because I was able to go back and take a look. We. Uh, as, as part of this in IT, whether it was helping to run reports, letting people in remotely to, to do work, that sort of thing, uh, we chalked up about 45 hours worth of work um, just to that. Once again, that was a project that um, we didn't lead, was somewhat ancillary to uh, you know, some other stuff going on. You know, it's certainly a great thing to, to get to, but it takes time. And so it's not always the, the simple, hey, uh, my printer is not printing, or hey, can you replace your toner cartridge sort of thing. PD building re renovations, uh, as you may be aware, uh, the top floor over the police department uh, took quite a bit. Uh, we were heavily involved with the, uh, the cabling of it, making sure computers had access, uh, new phones, you know, access points, you know, projectors, TVs, that sort of thing. Uh, fire department phone system, the fire department now sits on the same phone system as town hall and the majority of the other departments. About the only one on an older system right now is the police department. And with 911 no longer uh, falling under the town of Christiansburg, it'll make a changeover in the future a little bit easier. Uh, we tried to time that so uh, when 911 left, it'll help make our migration to a new phone system over there a little bit easier. Point-to-point uh, -point wireless upgrades. It uh, allows redundant connectivity to some of our sites. We manage an outdoor wireless network that does point-to-point, -point, uh, being from this water tank to that water tank gives us better connectivity. And I put that on there for, for fun, is council tablets. <laughs> so it's coming up. Um, I kind of talked about Fiber Master Plan a little bit. That's still something that will continue to go on. I won't um, uh, go too much further than what I already said. Uh, same thing, DR, BC plan. That's kind of a continuation. Desktop management. Hopefully that'll be an easy one to finally cross off our list and, and get implemented to, to really start uh, tracking and being able to make better decisions. Uh, SAN upgrade. Think of it as uh, more hard drive space. Uh, we're running out of space, we need to add more. Um, or maybe find another way to, to do some storage. Um, you know, a smarter way to, to store things, whether that's utilizing cloud or uh, you know, some other technologies reducing something. Um, so we'll kind of be doing a, an analysis around that. Basically, we just need more space to store stuff. Security assessment, I mentioned it, we kind of did like a light security assessment. This year I'm hoping to go a little further in depth, whether it's I think identifying a couple critical applications and trying to put it up against a, uh, we'll, we'll say, some more firm attacks to, to better uh, uh, to better secure things. In addition to uh, trying to go through uh, even just a quick audit for PCI, payment card industry, we've been taking credit cards for a little while. We've been able to go through a self-assessment because of the number of our transactions that we take. We want to make sure that we are still in compliance. And so uh, that's one of the things specifically assigned for uh, going through the security assessment. Rewire the PD. Uh, so uh, especially with the, the renovation of the top floor, we found out the rest of the PD is the network cabling is certainly subpar. Things have changed a lot over the years. Uh, we ran into some issues trying to wire up some new devices, and they're just running out of space. So we're looking at uh, enhancing the cabling for new technologies, new phone system, hopefully in the future. Um, in addition to, hey, I want to plug in a new printer. We are physically out of space to plug in more stuff. Call accounting. Uh, this is a, a piece of software that will allow us to, once again, hopefully make better decisions around uh, phone line services. Uh, phones are a pretty expensive thing that we use here at the town. We pay Verizon or Lumos or et cetera, a lot of money. Hopefully, uh, this will be able to give us some better decisions to make sure that we are purchasing the correct number of lines to support this building. Uh, through Lumos, we have about, not to get too technical, about 46 lines. That may be overkill. Maybe we can reduce that. Right now, we just don't have the ability to do reporting on it to find out that 
how many concurrent calls we're having. So a lot of this stuff is kind of on the back end um, and probably won't affect a lot of the end users, but hopefully, uh, like I said, allow us to make uh, smarter decisions and potentially save some money. What is Lumos, what is that? So Lumos is, a, is another uh, phone provider in the area. Uh, so Verizon, you probably think of, they, you know, it's slight monopoly, I guess, across all copper lines and that sort of thing. Lumos is another phone provider, so we use them uh, to, uh, for service here and at our rec center. And we can then use those lines to kind of transfer out. For the most part, we have two main phone lines, um, but it gives us 46 concurrent calls, and we use those across almost every department, uh, the PD probably being the largest department that is not currently on that system. We would love to be able to bring them on, and even in a hurry, but we want to make sure that the number of concurrent connections that we can have at any time can support the PD's needs. In addition to you know bringing out you know additional technologies and, and stuff like that, meaning that if uh, if you want to try to get a hold of somebody here in town and, and you know maybe they're out in the field, you know they can still call their desk phone and it'll ring their cell phone automatically. So we're looking at trying to push out some more of these services. Um, to hopefully give a, we'll say, a better customer service experience, um, but we want to make sure that we have the technology in place to be able to support those features. Have you checked out the pricing if we didn't have the landlines and give everybody a cell phone? No. No, we haven't. Uh, I mean, certainly for mobile users, that, that could make a lot of sense. We also have a lot of desk staff. Uh, you know, finance will say we probably, I don't know, a dozen employees or something like that. Mm -hmm. you, we may not, um, they may not be a great use uh, scenario, but you're right, maybe for some, some other folks uh, that are certainly more mobile, you yeah. know, pull the desk off. So, yeah. once again, this sort of software will help give us some of that better data to say, hey, how many calls are actually coming into those landlines? Okay. An outdoor Wi Fi pilot. And so, uh, this is kind of one of those projects you may see about, read about, think it's cool, you know, you walk into some downtown areas and you have Wi-Fi accessibility. It's, it's kind of neat, it's kind of a, you know, somewhat of an older trend, um, but certainly still very applicable. Um, and so what we're looking to do is trying to figure out how can we do it. Um, is it? Is it something that's pretty easy to do? You know, if you wanted to you know, light up downtown Christiansburg with Wi-Fi, how easy would it be to do? What's involved? But then it also has some back end um, uh, functionality and, and benefits for us, such as our, our police department uh, allows them to upload the videos from their uh, from their police cars, from their dash cams, much faster than over a, a Verizon connection and that sort of thing. So picking these hot spots, you know, whether it could be in parks or you know other key areas in town, it's basically figuring out another way to get network connectivity into smaller pockets of town where we could use it. Um, discussion came up at one point about blue light phones. You know, along the Huckleberry Trail, that sort of thing. You know, as of right now, we would have had to, to potentially go out and, and ask, you know, Verizon or some of these other companies to provide some sort of a, a telephone or a phone connection to it. Um, looking into some technologies like that can certainly help support then those technologies. And so we try to want to wrap our heads around it, see how difficult or easy it might be to do. Um, and once we get that technology um, into some, like I said, whether it's parks or pump stations and stuff like that. It can give us uh, a little more functionality, we hope. And so we, we look to do a pilot here this year just to see what's involved and, and hopefully be able to come back with some great projects in the future. Um, these probably aren't quite as um, interesting to a lot of folks. Um, really, it's Palmer Street radio site. We're looking at adding an admin channel to our, kind of call it, I'll keep calling our police fire rescue radios. Uh, we've had quite a few requests that during large events, whether, well, maybe during like a triathlon runs or downtown festivals, Right now, our police fire rescue folks are having to talk just basic um, conversations, we'll say, logistical conversations over their emergency channels. We are looking at installing basically a small radio um, frequency specifically for um, special events. So if somebody needs to direct traffic, if somebody needs to direct uh, the parade, that sort of thing, we're not having to use emergency services frequencies and radios to do that. We can use um, another site. Uh, where we can use another set of channels or, or codes, and so um, that's there to support that. We've had uh, several requests for it. We've kind of identified in a slight, uh, in a small uh, survey. We feel that this is fairly central in town and, and would be beneficial. Uh, microwave radio link upgrades, once again, working with police fire rescue radios. 
This is to reduce the amount of static, um, uh, talking from one side of the town to the other, reducing the number of frequencies that we need to have allocated to us as well. To try to consolidate some of that, and this is a, a big project that will be going on here probably the good next six months. And so it's actually handled out of, um, I guess funding is actually with the rescue squad, um, because it's radio communications and falls under IT. Uh, I get to work with it as well, which is pretty awesome. That's it for me. I'm happy to answer any questions, clarify anything. Uh, so hopefully next year I can come back and continue to give you some updated data about how we're doing. Adam, one question. The revenue recovery funds that we put in place a number of years ago for the uh, upgrade and enhance our emergency services, fire, rescue, and, and police, have you seen a benefit derived from the town and the citizens pursuant to us being able to use that money for purposes just above what you mentioned there in the last couple of uh, Yes. This one right there, for sure. the most part, at least half of it is getting funded directly from revenue recovery. And how much is the total funding for that project such as that? I know it's a big undertaking. Three hundred. So 150000 that's coming from revenue recovery? I, I believe so. I was trying to look at the budget earlier, um, but I want to say I think it was around 100, around 150 was directly out of. That's great. Know, which, is, which is fantastic. I, I will certainly say probably wouldn't have happened or later on down the road or much much more difficult, I guess, without having that funding. Great. Thank you. Yes. And the call accounting, you're saying you will have reports for the phones next year? Yes, so it's just a matter of, um, we'll say, getting it on our project schedule and trying to figure out uh, you know, when that's going to fit in timeline-wise. Time line wise. I don't think it's, it's huge. Our, our system can already support it. It's kind of just hopefully adding on, adding it on fairly quickly. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about that one just to kind of give us the, you know, how long have our operators been on the phone and that sort of thing. How many calls are coming in? Um, are they getting transferred correctly? That sort of thing. Uh, so. Uh, with the police calls being so much higher than all the others, is there any plan on taking a look and see why, or putting you, uh, one of your guys over there, you know, let them work out of the police station for a while just to see what's going on? Well, to be honest, so there was a slight uptick, maybe by about 4% of the number of service requests year over year, mm -hmm. meaning that. The 911 authority changeover, I would like to think, accounted for at least some of those, if not all of those. But I think it's it's just the nature of the number of people and the amount of technology that they have. Um, they are they are a busy bunch, and we try to respond and, and kind of make them a priority because of the nature that they do. Uh, I'm almost hoping that we may start to see a little bit of a decrease because we are no longer supporting the dispatchers. And that was certainly a, a huge thing. But at the same time, we're still supporting all the you know, uh, mobile data terminals that are in the vehicles. I think we have about 34 or 35 of those. So our police cars have a lot of technology in them, and they continue to, to look at new technologies. Um, I know they continue to look at um, body cameras and stuff like that, and, and I can't really speak to it. I know they've been doing some pilot projects and, and stuff like that. But that's certainly you know, one of those very hot topics right now, and, and they are looking into, but it's, it's an incredibly expensive um, undertaking, and so I know they have some of it now, but I don't think it's a full rollout. And so, um, you know, I know that's certainly coming down the pike as well. All right, thanks. So I, I think it's, I think it's about normal. Okay. All right. Any other questions? The Palmer Street thing. I think that sounds like a very good idea, especially for <coughs> special events and things of that nature. Do you know when that you'll be able to uh, augment this? One of the current challenges with that site is the ground space that we have allocated. So we have tower space, which for the most part we typically include when anybody's looking to erect a new cell tower or, or anything like that. Typically as they go through our CUP process, we try to get tower space. So we have tower space, now we're looking for ground space. And we don't need much, but for the most part we need like a, you know, about 100 square feet, you know, maybe enough to put an 8x8 or a 10x10 building. And up there, it's packed in pretty tight. So that's one of the logistical things that we're uh, looking through. That's, that's what we've used traditionally, like 8x8 eight eight storage sheds, that sort of thing. Um, if we can't seem to fit that in, we're going to look to actually do some, um, some equipment that is rated for outdoor use. And so may help offset the cost. That stuff is you know, a little more expensive um, than what we traditionally use. But to, you know, to get it in there, we may have to go down that route. All right. Thank you, Adam. 
I would uh, also be remiss if I didn't welcome our new town manager, Steve Biggs, on board. This is his first official meeting. Uh, Should have got you in the recognitions, but you got a part in this thing. I'm okay with it. You okay with it? <laughs> right. Discussions by mayor and council members. And the first is the appointment of Wayne Nelson, director of engineering and special projects, to serve as town engineer. Mr. Biggs, is that one of yours? Well, um, my understanding is that our town engineer historically was Mr. Holmes, and so with uh, his retirement, uh, we need to take the uh, action to formally designate uh, town engineer. Certainly, uh, Mr. Nelson is qualified and is willing. Um, so, I would move to approve the appointment of Mr. Nelson as the town engineer. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? I take it that is your recommendation, Mr. Biggs. Yes, sir. There we go. Madam Clark. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hopper? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stites? Aye. It'll be 6 0. <laughs> That's all you are. Next is recommendation of reappointment of Casey Newell to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Ms. Newell's term expires August 31st, 2016. She has served on the uh, uh, Board of Zoning Appeals for a long I like time. She's not here, so I'd like to table it. You would? I'd like to table it. We've, we've required our mm -hmm. commission appointees and board appointees to actually come before council. And if they're not here, traditionally we have tabled it until the next meeting when we have time. Okay. I second All right. We've got a motion second to table. Madam Clerk. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Uh, Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hupper? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. That would be 6 0. Uh, next is the re reappointment of Lee Wall to the Montgomery Tourism Development Council as Christiansburg Hotel representative. Ms. Hall's term expires July 22nd, 2016, so uh, it will expire this month. Uh, Lee is here. Uh, Lee has uh, uh, works at the Holiday Inn. She is taking uh, filling the she filled the unexpired term of Rhonda Cooper. Rhonda Cooper that left the area. Well, went to Dublin to, to a new job, so she's filled in there. Uh, Lee also she looks familiar to spent a lot of time uh, working at the Chamber of Commerce office. Mm -hmm. So uh, we think it's a really good fit, and uh, I would entertain that motion. I'll so move. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Thank you for being here. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hunter? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. It would be 6 0. Uh, while we're on that, the vein of the Tourism uh, Development Council, I have a, an email. Uh, I got from Mr. Biggs this morning, uh, copying Lisa Bleakley, who had sent something out here uh, July the 8th. Uh, we have another opening uh, from the restaurant industry, and uh, she has recommended Ashish Malothra, who's the manager of the Black Blackstone Grill at the mall. Uh, he is interested in serving, and in her opinion, would bring much to the group. He also has, has a lodging management background in Northern Virginia. So I haven't had a chance to speak to him yet, but uh, I, I think I will, if the council thinks that's okay, Lisa knows him and has talked to him, uh, I will pursue that and see if we can't get him in here one night. Uh, you know, it's, if we met during the day, it'd be, be no problem, but he does do his work at night. So. But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to get him in here for just a short period of time. So if that's all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pursue that. May I ask a question to Miss Miss Wall since she's here? Sure. Okay. Miss um, Wall, do you live in Christiansburg? Um, I live in Montgomery County. In Montgomery, in the county, and you've been on the you've been on the board for how long? Um. Tourism. It was, it was about a couple months, and then it ran oh, out. Okay. Yeah. Well, since we have people, citizens in this case of business uh, interest serving, and we welcome as a council, we welcome to have tips sometimes if you see some things that maybe we could do better uh, to support 
uh, you know, business in Christiansburg, hoteliers, you're, you're representing the, you know, the, whatever, the occupancy type things, but uh, having our, our representatives of these boards from time to time, you know, you, you're at these meetings and you hear some things and, you, and uh, we welcome you to come before us whenever you have a notion to and, and say, hey, I have an idea. Or, you know, things like this, uh, the citizen representatives that we have on these boards can be very useful to us to make good decisions, especially when it comes budget time and say, hey, here's a program that has a high impact. I've seen it firsthand at my hotel. Um, but we're we're all ears, especially for our you know representatives that volunteer their time to serve, and you know I'm just welcome you to come back anytime you have some helpful hints for us because we, we, we need them. We need Yeah, we need them. We, <laughs> we we we're, we're not we're not we're not the experts. That's right. Yeah, we're not the experts. That's right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, town council reports, and I'm going to start with Mr. Hubbard. Well, I just uh, wanted to bring up a point. Um, I bring my recycling uh, material over to the recycling center that is right below uh, Christopher Primary School, yeah. and uh, a lot of times I come over there and it is it is loaded. And I was over there the other day, and there were three or four other ladies there that were putting their stuff in there. And I know we sort of talked about it, but I think it would be good if we explored it more to try to get a curbside recycling and I'm thinking that maybe we could have some uh, uh, somebody do some studies on this uh, maybe have a work session on it uh, maybe see what uh, different places are doing what Blacksburg is doing what is doing down there see if it is affordable for us because I think it would be very 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 good for Christiansburg and I think it's one thing that everybody supports you know a lot of times we have something that's some people are for it and other people aren't. But I think curbside recycling is something we would do. And I would go as far as to say, I think if we did curbside, it would improve our collection by, you know, four or five hundred percent. I just uh, just had that feeling. And so I was just throwing that out and I, I would think it'd be good if, if we could follow through on that. Okay. I, I have one other thing here and I am a little bit amiss that I should bring this up. But it's really been on my mind, and I know that people at our level, by our level, I'm talking about towns, don't get involved in this. But in the last 10 days, there has been so much trauma in this country. And I, I think that, you know, I would just like to sort of get on record to tell the people who are our state legislators and federal legislations that concerning gun control, I think, you know, we've, we've talked about it a lot, we've cried a lot about it, but I would just, I think it's time that we try to do something and and everybody to work together on this, and I, I just wanted to throw that out. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Okay. Uh, so, so, I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on the recycling. Uh, mm -hmm. Our town manager, Steve Biggs, has set a uh, water, solid waste, and sewer committee meeting where that's been the subject. And uh, for those of you who are new here tonight, that count recycling curbside has been a part of council discussion for years. I think initially when I came on, we did our 2020 vision. That was one of the most important items. It always boils, boils down to cost. A few years ago, it was one of our top items to reach by 2020. And just to make sure everybody, and Steve, uh, just to refresh your memory, this is going to be something we'll, we plan to implement by 2020. It's been our vision for over a decade, and we are going to do it. So the discussions are still there. It's just the implementation of the program that we need to work out. And uh, If you have time, anybody's welcome to come to that committee meeting August 2nd. It'll be posted, I'm sure, in the next week or two. But uh, I have nothing else. Uh, other than my report from the water, solid waste, and sewer committee. Thank you. Mr. Stipes. <clears throat> Brief report on the town bikeway walkway committee. Our last meeting was Friday. Uh, Mr. Showalter asked uh, in a council email about uh, the schedule for rolling out uh, some improvements we have planned for the Huckleberry Trail, including um, shelters, water stations, emergency call stations, and benches and our we're, we're we're having a soft rollout on the fundraising for that 
in early August, as soon as we have our next meeting, we're looking at a presentation and we're going to have a soft rollout and the hard rollout will begin with some press releases and so forth, circling around our, or centered around our wilderness trail days. And um, we have a good plan. The staff's been fantastic support and we expect to have the fundraising in place uh, for this by the end of the year and then actually impl implementation uh, next year. And also like to welcome uh, Steve Velardis to the meeting this evening. Um, I use you as an example as it did Miss Miss Wall uh, making a difference. And uh, Steve, whether he knows it or not, is sort of a pioneer uh, to bring up uh, urban agriculture in the town. And we hear a lot of different issues, but when citizens bring things to our attention, it makes us think about it and makes us decide. And uh, so I'd like to, to thank him for coming tonight and for his you are a pioneer, whether you realize it or not. <laughs> and that's and also to welcome Mr. Biggs. His first week, you can already tell there's a new sheriff in town. Absolutely. And, and I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hall. Well, I, I, and just a perfect segue that, I mean, we've already seen Mr. Biggs, the responsiveness to citizen concerns um, that has been um, well versed and, uh, and to the point. And uh, I think we're already seeing benefits from that. And I certainly appreciate today uh, there was a citizen concern that you were on top of immediately. I, I, I think that's what we look for. That's what we expect, and we really appreciate it. Um, real quickly, uh, hit on what Henry mentioned and what Steve mentioned. Steve's correct. Henry is correct. The uh, curbside recycling is an issue that has been on our the forefront of discussions for quite some time. And I'm looking forward to the fact that we've now put money aside in this year's budget to start studying that more actively moving forward. In other words, adding a little bit of, of teeth to the shark, if you will. Um, but we do have the meeting on 8-2 with Mr. Biggs, who is someone who has a vast background and knowledge in this particular subject. So we're going to tap him in, in many different directions when it comes to this. But it's always been about not so much utility. It's always been about the financial constraints and what we can do. And I'm looking forward to getting down and dirty with those numbers and seeing what we can roll out uh, in the upcoming years. Very, I'm, I'm very, uh, again, appreciative and, and also very excited about uh, Mr. Biggs' involvement thus far in that uh, project. Um, the Top Gun World Series is complete. Uh, the people have now vacated. Uh, I want to offer my appreciation to the town, town staff, and the citizen support. We had a lot of people out there uh, at a lot of the games. I didn't get to go to hardly anything this year. It seemed like I had other things going on with, um, with the girls, but um, uh, every, from every report that I've heard, and there was excellent coverage um, from the, not only on the, uh, the um, TV stations, but also our local media. And I think I really appreciate that. It always keeps things rolling out and keeps keeping our citizens in the know. Um, the next uh, Rec Commission meeting is August 1st at, um, uh, up at to the Recreation Department at uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, anyone that would like to be there, please come by. We'd love to have you. Um, one last thing I want to mention, uh, appreciation to Aquatics and to the Recreation Department. Um, I always mention sometimes there's things that make you feel good to be a town resident of Christiansburg. Most times when I mention it's something involving the uh, kids or the youth. And we've had some great coverage recently. Aquatics, first and foremost, involvement with the schools, involvement with the kids, kids programs. I was at a house last night. Their kids are taking swimming lessons. And it's just, I just love hearing that. I don't ever mention anything to them. I just kind of listen to it. But there's so many youth that are being reached right now through our programs. I think it's wonderful. And, and uh, a perfect uh, example of that as well with the Recreation Department is the Jill's Buddy Camp. If you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it. It's very important. It's a, um, a bit of a, um, um, an item that... Um, our, uh, Mr. Epperly, our present recreation um, director, feels very strongly about. But it's the same thing. It's an outreach with children who otherwise might not have that mentor or that. It's a buddy system, but it's also kids with special needs that just don't have the outlet. And it's a way in which they have been paired. And there's been excellent coverage from the uh, again, radio and local media, um, both written and also um, video, that uh, I think it helps to show us in a good light as a town. It always makes me feel very good, but I mean, nothing's better than seeing any of the kids up at the aquatics or over there at the recreation center. So I really appreciate the efforts. Recreation, we have a name in the town of Christopher. We're getting a, an excellent uh, re recognition across the state. Already top going world series is one thing recently. CAA that's coming in. I mean, uh, it, it's just wherever you look, we're getting a name. We're making a name for ourselves in more ways than one. I appreciate those efforts. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh Mr. Bishop? Yeah, that's a couple of things from the rescue squad. Uh, over the weekend, they responded to Giles County at the Cascades as a major aid call. And of course, we probably know that the outcome wasn't that great. Uh, but once again, uh, the <coughs> rescue squad also uh, did coverage for the Top Gun games. I don't have the number of hours they put in, but they did volunteer a lot of hours for coverage. That's all I have. Yeah, they were there. So, I mean, Every day that I was out there, and I was out there three of the four days, they were there, and they were there from start to finish every night. And it's that 
that, that was that was good. I was glad to see them doing that. Uh, Mr. Collins. Uh, yes, sir. Just a few things. The first thing is, uh, Mr. Biggs, we want to welcome him. We want to would tell him we're glad he's here, and whatever we can do for you, we will. And the letter that you wrote to the Mockingbird Cafe was excellent. The second thing is, Mr. Stipes and Mr. Hall just set me right up for this. I like to break some new ground here, and the Christiansburg High School is a great place. The students there are great people. I want to give them a chance to have some extraordinary educational opportunities. I want to do an internship, put one of them on council. Uh, they wouldn't have a vote, but they could sit here with us and they could talk, you know, explain their ideas. And we'd have to get with the school and uh, let them pick it because we wouldn't want the controversy of who we pick. Mm -hmm. But uh, what a great educational opportunity that would be for a young man or a young woman. That, that's not new. We have done that in the past. Oh, have you? Okay. Uh, it's kind of fallen by the wayside, mm -hmm. but we can certainly step that up. They would, uh, yeah, I think it would be awesome. They would, they would be a part of the audience. Yeah. And so yeah. here at the, at the table. Okay. Okay, and that would just be one more reason to move to Christiansburg. Or move out, depending or on move what you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's hard to say. If you want my kids, I'll be moving out. So. No. <laughs> that's good. I, I will. Uh, I'll get with Mr. Biggs. Okay, and thanks. We'll, we'll see what we can come up with. Thanks. Um, anything else? No, sir. That's all. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, I will echo what uh, Councilman Hall said about the World Series. It was a it was a great event. I want to give a, a tip of the hat to Marty Gordon, our, our uh, works for the rec department, but he was instrumental. He was a he was just shy of a tour guide, I think, this weekend. <laughs> he was sending coaches and, and parents with questions, you know, what do we do? Where do we go? And I mean, you sent them where you sent them up to Claire Lake to do the paddle boarding and you I know they went to the recreation to the aquatic center. To and they went tubing. I mean, he was he was kind of a an unofficial tour guide. And in that vein, I want to thank Terry for partnering with the uh, rec department and getting those the passes to the participants. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand they I know they used it maybe Friday or Saturday. I'm sure. And 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 for keeping the the leisure side open in light of a swim meet that was going on. So it was a pretty busy weekend. But I do appreciate that. Uh, I, th I wanted to, and I have expressed it to the uh, uh, to the rec department. But I, I thought the Fourth of July celebration this year went very well. You know, we dodged a few showers, but uh, you know there was a, a good participation of, of people downtown. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but it must have been a minute after the fireworks finished that it torrential downpour. It couldn't have been timed any better. I swear. Well, yeah, I think they sch they scheduled it a little bit. They got it in because they were going to shoot them off at, at 9:45. Right. And I think they started about. 9:35 or 9:4, somewhere just just it was perfect. just to yeah. just to get it out of the way. We were right. we were sweating that one pretty good, but the the turnout downtown was good. The farmers market uh, vendors all I think were pleased with uh, with the outcome as they always are when we have one of these events. Um, and the other thing with Terry, I wanted to also compliment her on the swim camp that she has been running this summer. Uh, it is excellent. I mean, uh, and, and the kids, I mean, you're running it all summer, is that correct? Correct. And, uh, you know, the kids and the parents, I, I talked to several of the parents when I see them up there, and they just, you know, they think it's the greatest thing they've ever done, and, and they all want to sign up for next year, I think. So uh, it, that's been quite successful. Uh, I spoke to them one, one Friday uh, the same week, and I think I was probably low man on the totem pole because at one event they got, so they had the fire department up there, and the fire department sprayed all the kids down off the off the truck and they had the garbage trucks up there which is always a hit and then the police chief i don't think anybody asked mark if he'd shot anybody but but, but but he has gotten that question in the past so, but it was a good week uh, and any of you of us that are out and about during the day you ought to just stop in there and see what they're doing i think you're you're cooking this week it's cooking week mm -hmm. okay but we always uh, i want to just add that we always access depot park from around back we take the kids down to the park and so, you know, from through the skate park all the way down. We go over the creek and it's just wonderful. They're all in orange shirts, so if you see them all down, then that's part of the game. Caught lizards one day out of the creek? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good thing. Anyway, uh, the other thing is uh, the VML conference is October the 9th, 10th, and 11th. 
We need to get with uh, Michelle. Have you handled most of the reservations yet, or yes, sir. do we need some confirmation back and forth? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, yes, Everyone we is, as, is registered, but I just need to know those who are not planning to attend. So, so the, the council those. members and their spouses and Correct. Are, are, are registered. If you're not going to participate, Michelle needs to know. I need an extra day. I got you. Uh, we got to check in Friday. i got a mayor's conference on the night. So where's it at this year? Virginia Beach. Yeah. Okay, that's right. A good, good place to go. Um, that's pretty much all I have. Town manager's report. So this sets the tone. Just the pressure. Pressure. Okay. No pressure there, buddy. We're well, breaking, <laughs> breaking ground. <laughs> not, not really. No. <laughs> Everyone's waking up in the audience. Exactly. <laughs> just, a, just a few simple items this evening just to kind of bring you up to date on. Um, we did get notice from the uh, Commission for the Arts that we were approved for a $5,000 local government challenge grant. Um, I think that was consistent with the, the uh, estimate that we put in the budget in relation to a donation that we make at the museum that's uh, available for marketing those purposes. Um, the council was copied on a note from a citizen regarding the matter over on Red Oak Drive. and just wanted to let you know that we are handling that item as a, as a nuisance right. complaint. But, uh, uh, we haven't applied yet. We haven't brought closure to it yet, but just wanted you, because you were copied on that uh, inquiry, to, to let you know that we're, we're handling that um, and, and uh, did do a site visit already. Uh, also wanted to kind of uh, let you know about the sidewalk project downtown, what the schedule is. Just as a reminder, the original um, contract date on that was July the 9th, but we had a number of found conditions in the subsurface, and, um, and so there have been some change orders and as is custom with the change orders, they've requested some additional time. Um, it, right now, the project is at uh, July 24th, but there are some additional change orders that are pending. Um, it could go on as far as uh, September the 7th. Um, we're going to meet with the, the contractor and, and go out to the site and do some work and see if we can improve on that. Um, obviously, the, the project has taken some time, has been um, inconvenient in some ways. It's a very attractive project, very valuable project to the downtown area, but uh, also somewhat inconvenient. So we're going to see what we can do with the additional days and, and, and um, expedite getting the project completed. Right. Um, also, I know you had in your agenda packets the contract from the uh, uh, Colonial Athletic Association, but I believe that was an agenda add-on. We included it this time just for public information purposes. Didn't we? We acted on that. I think we did. We did react on that. I just wanted to clarify that yeah. for Terry because she's here in, in attendance this evening. But because it was an add-on, we did include it with your agenda packet this time. That's all I have. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. Okay. Unless um, I make things up. <laughs> I, I would just like to say that I appreciate, and I'm sure everybody else appreciates it. It seems like last week you gave a little bit of a rundown about what had been going on during the week, sort of a step-by-step, -step, bullet by bullet. And I think that, are you intending to do that uh, weekly or something? Weekly? That's what we'll do. Uh, the, I think the staff is very uh, excited about that. Um, you know, we talked about it in our staff meeting last Thursday. And um, what I will do is I will invite from them input on items that they've handled during the course of the week that they think uh, would be relevant or interesting to you, something that you may be approached on. Um, and so they will be sending me their activities, and we'll, we'll compile that into a Thursday afternoon report and get it out to you every week. Yeah, that's awesome. Wonder, yes. that's that's awesome. That really is good. Yeah. And, and, <clears throat> and, and since she is, is here tonight, Melissa Powell, our public information officer, mm -hmm. we, I want you to know how much I appreciate mm -hmm. The upgrade, the, the you know the notices and, and the heads up on everything that's going out, and I, I'm sure the council feels the same way. It's uh, it's it's very helpful for us. Uh, hopefully, we won't be caught off guard on things as as we, it has happened in the past, but that's okay. We're, it's it's a new it's a new year and a new new sheriff in town, so, and a new deputy sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, that's uh, that's been very helpful to me, uh, just just to be in the loop and to feel like I can answer questions. I don't have to run up an odd aisle at the grocery store if somebody's asking something on that. So. that and that that's a big deal for us. Is someone yeah. at Churchill mentioned something? I didn't know that restaurant was having a grand opening, or right. I didn't know there was a missing child, or. I mean, I'm making up stuff, uh, but that's the type of thing that we don't like to read about in the paper or uh, or have someone mention it to us and say, what's up with that? And we say, well, I don't know. I'll check that's on right. that and get back with you. That's, that's right. Lexus. Lexus. 
feel good about it. Yes. Is there anything else to come before council? One, one quick thing, Mike. The um, Mr. Biggs, the Water and Sewer Committee, because it is a very important meeting coming up on, on August 2nd. Again, it's going to involve looking at garbage collection rates. We're looking at you know, more of a comprehensive plan and kind of looking to explore some things. Is that a 530 meeting? Is that correct? Yes. Sir. And that way, if anybody from the citizens would like to be present, please be there. Love to have you. Hearing nothing else, we are adjourned. Thank you for attending.